Hi, I'm Penny, this is Fraser, and this is our level two chemical reactivity strategy video. This standard is broken into a few key parts. We've got acids and bases, equilibrium, and rates of reaction. These concepts are pretty well confined to their own questions, so you're looking at about three questions per year. So first up is rates of reaction. This will be pretty familiar to you if you did level one acids and bases. So you need to know how a catalyst, concentration, surface area, and temperature affect the rate of reaction and how changing those affects the rate of reaction. The really important one that everyone seems to mess up is temperature, because there's two ways in which temperature influences the rate of reaction. Not only is everything moving around more faster at a higher temperature, so collisions are happening more often, also those particles have high energy. So when they do collide, they're more likely to have the activation energy leading to a reaction. It's really good to structure your answer and always relate it back to collision theory. So using phrases like uh, number of successful collisions per second or number of collisions per second is a really, really good way to uh, phrase your answer. Most students are comfortable calculating pH given the concentration of H3O plus ions. However, when students are given concentrations of OH ions, they get a little bit thrown off. There's two methods for us to combat that. So for example, if we were given a question that was asked us to calculate the pH of 0.1 moles per litre of NaOH, there's, we could use um, POH. Now to calculate POH, we use negative log of the hydroxide ions. So in this case, it would be negative log of 0.1, which in this case would equal 1. So we know that the POH plus pH equals 14. So 1 plus the pH equals 14, so the pH therefore must equal 13. Another method is using the water constant. We know that the water constant equals 10 to the negative 14, which equals the product of the concentration of the hydroxide ions and the H3O plus ions. So in this case, we know that the, pro the concentration of the hydroxide ions is 0.1. So then we can solve for H3O plus ions to get the concentration of that is 10 to the negative 13. Therefore, then we can just plug that straight back into the pH concentration. So then negative log of 10 to the negative 13, which again just equals a pH of 13. Much like reaction rates, it's important to know how changing temperature, pressure, concentrations and adding a catalyst is going to affect the position of an equilibrium. Just remember, it all comes back to Le Chatelier's principle. Whenever you make a change to the system, the system is going to try and do the opposite. If you increase the, a concentration, it's going to try and decrease it. If you increase the temperature, it's going to try and decrease the temperature. Remember, all the system can really do is either favour the Ford's reaction or the reverse reaction. One particular question they really like asking about is how temperature affects, uh, affects the position of an equilibrium. They might give you an observation like a colour change or a change in the value of Kc and ask you to work out whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So definitely have a, have a go at trying a few of those questions out. Overall, this paper only has three key concepts so it's pretty easy to predict what you're going to see. Make sure when you're answering to really have a good structure to your answers because examiners really like to see that. While we've covered a lot of strategies today, we haven't quite covered all of them. So it's important that you guys do at least three to four practice exams and check out the study time walkthrough guides. Thanks for watching and good luck for your exams.